Hey, everybody. Um, I, I assume you're out there. I assume you're uh, listening. I assume you're in attendance, all that stuff. But I uh, feel an awful lot like this little picture I'm going to show you. I've been teaching online school, and this is how it feels some days uh, in, in webinars in particular, because I will be talking, uh, but I will only hear Tanya. I won't hear any of you. And sometimes it's like, is there anybody out there? Are you trying to connect with me? Make a sign if you're out there. <laughs> so it just kind of feels like that sometimes. Um, I did a special piece for this webinar, and I painted a sketch of mine of Dracula. And I'll show you the original sketch here. I'm assuming you can see my painter screen, I hope. So this is the original sketch. And it is just something out of my sketchbook. And there's, you know, this one you can see extended a little bit. I wanted more feet or more space by his feet. And so what I did is I just copied and pasted a bunch of the background in here to start with this background. Um, I love Halloween. I love drawing Halloween things. I don't have to explain myself where my ideas come from, that kind of thing. And I did a couple of these Dracula ones where Dracula's had a hard night on the town. And and this one, he's you know leaning against the headstone, holding his bottle of O plus blood, and he's really worn out from his night. So uh, this is what I decided to paint uh, this year. I'm going to real quick, just first off, show you a two minute video uh, that just has all of the save versions combined into two minutes. I did add, uh, just because I don't want you to sit in silence, I put in a Nightmare Before Christmas song with it, uh, just so it's, you know, so it's just not dead silent. Um, I borrowed that, it's Danny Elfman's, it's the movies. Um, this is the only place you'll see it because, you know, I don't want to be infringing on anybody's copyright and maybe you won't even hear it. I don't know if you'll even hear the system sound on here. So this is basically the process that I went through. And what I've done is I save, uh, use Painter's iterative save, and I save like a maniac um, because I hate losing more than a half hour's worth of work. Hey, and John. So, yes. Um, for some reason, I am not seeing the video. I see, oh, okay. I think that here it is. It just started okay. playing. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. I hadn't actually clicked to go. Oh, okay. I thought there was a delay. I just saw a black screen. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm painting him in a black background. So this okay. shows the changes and things I go through. And uh, I sometimes just paint one like this one. Sometimes I'll really plan something out. Um, but again, I, I hate losing work. So about every half hour, or before I make a big change or right after I make a big change, I'll save a version of it. And so I didn't actually record me painting this. So you can just see some uh, coffins that were in there. I thought originally I might go with that and decided, nah, I'm not going to go with that. Made it too busy. And so I'm kind of exploring where I'm going. I know where I'm going, but not, not as concretely as I should. Um, I tell my students all the time, you know, solve the problems before you do the painting. And this particular one, I was just winging it because um, I was having fun with it. Kind of a personal project. I could do what I wanted. And this pretty much is, you know, the save versions from the beginning to the very end. Now, understand, I wish I could paint this quick, but uh, this this image probably took me. 20 to 25 hours. I worked quite a bit in it. Almost all my digital paintings start from sketches in my sketchbook. And so that is the final piece. Whoops, and I, I've got a big version. I guess I can't pause it, it just goes off. Oh, there it is. So that's the final version. And so I decided at the end well, I decided when I started that, you know, it's Dracula after a, you know, hard night and he made it into the crypt, but he kind of fell down right next to a pillar at the front. 
and the door is open and he's not even aware that the sunlight's coming in crossing his legs and then hitting the back wall and he's on fire but he just doesn't even care at this point so I, I, kind of a little narrative built itself in there so let me hide this and um, you can see painter now and what i'm going to show you is kind of um, what i do when i set up and start working on a painting so I created, let me bring in an image so it's not so boring to look at. Let me bring in the final one. So there were 136 final images, and this is the final one. It is uh, 5,000 pixels wide by, you go up to 100%. So I'll put it on his face. So there we are at 100%. and. Uh, I built it because I'm a traditional artist from dark to light. I got the sketch in. I don't worry a lot um, if I have the sketch. You know, I don't really even pay much attention to it until I um, I save a version of it, a new layer, in case I need to come back to the sketch. But most of the time, I, I don't, and then I eventually delete it. I deleted it in this one. I want to open up, sorry, back off and open an earlier version that's got all my layers and things so I can show that to you. So the very final version that I just showed you has pretty much um, everything's been flattened. All the layers are combined as much as they can. This particular image, I couldn't combine a lot of the layers. I had to wait, and at the very end, I cloned it, made a few changes on the clone, and it became the final. So I think I've still got the, here is the sketch layer. So if I change this to um, something so you can see, multiply, you can kind of see, I've stayed pretty true to it, but I have changed things. I changed the bottle, you know, I change things as I need to uh, when I'm going along. Of course, I changed the environment he's in. Um, I took this from an old Bella Lugosi, you know, where they've got the light shining across his eyes and put that in. Um, what this turned out to be a lot more challenging image for me uh, because it's supposed to be mostly dark and doing dark and balancing that with detail. Uh, and then I've got this really strong light coming in. I wanted to maintain the dark and that part of that's the light on the wall here. I contained it. so. The light just doesn't lead you right off the edge. And then all the lines, the cobwebs, all of these kind of still go around to this area of Dracula. I made his hand more subdued. Um, you saw originally I had some coffins put in here, spent about three hours painting those and decided I didn't like them afterwards, dumped them out. And so this is what I came back to. Let me drag this over. The first thing I do is start dragging out the brushes I want to use. And some of these are default brushes and some of them are not. Because I'm not real good at looking at uh, icons of them. So if it's got an icon view, I can't tell what that brush is. I have to make it a text view so I understand what they are. A lot of these are my own brushes that I made. It shifted everything when I did the text view. And some are default and some are default with just a couple little tweaks. So a lot of these say like Don's erase all hard. It's just the standard erase all brush, but I've made a few tweaks that I like. Uh, Basic Blender is a blender brush. And to get these on, it's it's really easy. You start, all you've got to do to start building uh, a custom palette, and I'll just use that. This brush up here is I hold the shift key and drag it on. I can just drag it out into the open. Creates me a custom palette um, immediately. If I drag it off, it'll disappear. I do this almost for every um, every project I do because I'd rather not be drilling down through um, menu items and things. And you can put virtually anything uh, useful on this. You can put menu commands so I could turn on mirror painting. I could do all these things. This one is mostly just the brushes and a couple paper textures that I was going to use most. You see a zombie brush here. I, this was a demo brush and was doing it with some zombie clip art, but it's it's just an image hose brush. And if it 
comes up. It doesn't want to paint on that layer because uh, it's invisible. So you can see those, I made a rock nozzle on my own for all of the rocks and rubble in this. And here's what it looks like. And that is just the zombie brush. The brush without any extra looks like that. But since I know what it is, I know where to go for it and, and get to it. Um, skin spots, this, this is a custom brush. In fact, I think this one's in my brush pack for Corel and it paints all this kind of speckle. I don't know how good a resolution of it is, but that's what it does. It paints these speckly spots. And where I use it is you can see them in his face if I zoom in here. And these brushes, these, these kind of ones that do little texture things and such, I use them toward the end. I don't use them when I'm initially painting because it just gets in the way. So you can see these little kind of speckly areas in his forehead and things. You know, nobody's got perfect skin, especially if you're dead. So, you know, I use some of these brushes to just add a little bit of interest to this. So I built this whole thing of brushes that I was going to use. Um, these, the spinning one, smoke one, and these brushes here, they're all from a couple of brush packs that Corel has as add-ons for painter. I used the cobweb brush uh, specifically to do the cobwebs in the image. And it, it's very nice. I'm paint with a mouse, so it's just going to be pretty standard. But uh, given a lower opacity, put in the background, they look just a whole lot better than going out and searching for cobwebs to take photos of them. Uh, I think they work really well for that. Uh, so it's a standard brush. Uh, Random is also a standard brush. And this is one of my favorite because I like these little kind of for no explanation, these little spirally kind of lines you can see in there, these little things, I think they just break up the digital look without a lot of effort. Um, dust cloud, this one I used for the fog in the background here, and I applied a little bit. Here's what the brush looks like. I applied a little bit of blur to it. So, uh, and... I did one little chunk that was orange to go with this light, and then these chunks that were um, blue. And the reason I did this mostly is because my original idea of breaking up the wall or the where the wall meets the floor, I just didn't get anything I wanted to use, bricks or anything. I thought it was getting too busy. So this is kind of camouflaging. This is saying, that, yeah, I'm a pretty lazy artist. And I didn't want to work too hard, so I thought, put smoke in, put, you know, put a, a little bit of ground fog in. Uh, so that's what that one does. Uh, billowy, same kind of thing. Actually, this may have been the one I used there. So this is a standard image hose brush. Uh, spinning, this makes little tiny spins. And I really like, I just like these brushes a lot. But they are the last brushes. So these these actually came in and got put on this custom palette just a couple of days ago when I started doing this work. Most of the time, my work is done with these four brushes. Um, I erase all hard, and there's a standard real 2H pencil, and I just put Dawn's on it. I made a couple changes. Uh, basic brush, this is in my brush pack, and a basic brush, too, that I like. And those are the four brushes that I did 90% 90, 90 of this painting. I'll just tab out and in so you can. So 90% of this was done with, with those brushes. I did use the image hose for the rocks you can see, and then, you know, all the cobwebs and things. And in the fire, I used a couple of other particle brushes. You can see these little kind of supposed to be sparkly things. Here's a paper texture that is out on my palette right here called cobblestones because I want it to look like it's kind of falling apart. Um, the flames are just painted with uh, these brushes. I will use the distorto brush to push the shapes around at a very low strength. 
Uh, it's really nice for that. It's it's a much uh, more, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, subtle effect than when it's at full strength. Grout brush, another just created brush. This is, this is just a brush where well, you can see the brush. Whoops. Oh, good grief. Now I've got to rotate it back. Come on, come on, Don. Okay, so here's the shape. That's all that brush is. It's picking up a little paper grain, but then in the small, small sizes, I used it to paint the grout and things in the bricks. So four brushes, and then I started adding a few. A uh, bristle brush I used to paint his very sexy sweeping back hair. So really nice brush for this kind of thing. You know, he's he's too sexy, you know, for his shirt kind of thing. Um, so there's the brush with that oil brush. And you can see the cobwebs a little bit better. A couple extra things like that. So that's my, those are my brushes for the most part. Um, most of them done with four, and then I add a digital airbrush next, and some of these others. This cloud one's a nice brush that I use on skin, though I originally made it for clouds. Um, so most of the work is done just like you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this just out of the way. I'm going to I'm going to close it. I don't need it right now. I do have docked along the top here palette drawers that I use. So I've got papers here so I can go in and get papers I want. I've got a couple of paper or just one loaded right now that I wanted with this cobblestone palette in it. When I want it out of the way, I'll just dock it and then let it snap it in up top. Here's the image hose. And here are, I made a bunch of brick textures to paint the walls. And you can see here's four different rock textures. The These two are identical and these two are identical, except in this version or this version, this one. I added shadows to it, so there's a subtle um, drop shadow to it. And I made a bunch of different old brick patterns um, that I could use, and I didn't end up using them much. And then I had a bunch of these really strange random ones that I thought I might use. And I shouldn't have hidden my palette because if I want to show them to you. Okay, my zombie brush. And I'm going to add a lot of additional or take away additional color so you can see what this brush does. Whoops, too big. So see, it's kind of a, just a real strange, um, strange brush there. Hey, John. Yeah. While you're talking about the image hose, Jason was wondering, is there a minimum size for the individual images? I don't know offhand. A minimum size? Um, yeah. Honestly, if if I'm going, these are small. The, the images in these, this particular thing, they're all probably 64 by 64. So you can see they're pixely at, at this size. Um, at the size they were made for, you know, they're not as pixely. But I usually opt to make bigger brushes, uh, and that way it's much easier to uh, make them smaller and still have them look good than it is to make a smaller uh, individual piece of an image hose. Uh, I think mostly using them, you're going to be strained on the memory you have, for example, this, I'm trying to think of which one of these is the biggest brick one. This may be the biggest image hose. It may not be. This one's maybe bigger. Whoops, get rid of that. And I, it's a really big image hose. There's a lot of elements. Um, and so there's, it is, and it's not made to line up yet, but there's maybe 90 elements there. Uh, this, I didn't plan on using this, it was just here. This blood uh, blood drop thing, there are at least 90 elements in there, but they're they're rather they're larger than I plan on using them. Those bats look terrible small. 
and gunshots. Um, and there are a lot in there too. I'll make an image hose for anything that I know I'm gonna need a lot of. So grass, rocks, um, clouds, anything that I don't want to paint a ton of. Um, the example I use with people is, I did oh, a long, long time ago, I did a game cover and they wanted these characters standing on a pile of 10,000 gun shells. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. that's gonna be real easy to paint. But I built an image hose from a little bullet shell I rendered and painted 10,000 gun shells and made it look really good in about half an hour. And so um, I didn't tell them that, you know, when they said, wow, that was taking forever. I just, yeah, I brushed my head and said, yeah, you're right. Um, so uh, anything like that, and I, I keep them. I, I, one thing I do is I, when, the, when you sell, when you save the image out, you save it as a RIF file, but I always add an underscore and nozzle to it. Otherwise I get so many RIF files saved out. I don't know which ones are nozzles and which ones aren't. Um, and I, I wanna know that, I, I don't wanna go searching. So here's the layers and you can see, um, let me get a, see if I can, thumbnails, large. There's the original sketch and he also stayed down on the canvas layer. I can click through these and show you kind of what some of them do. So let me zoom out just a little bit. And what I start doing is I build this just like I would doing perspective in a painting that I start building from the back forward so that my objects overlap uh, correctly and I can get the effects on them. So and now the canvas is the brick walls. And you can see all the little ashes and fires and things I have on it. Then I've got this next one, which is, you can barely see what it's doing now, but it was a layer to darken um, the ashes, but combined, they're all pretty much the same. In fact, I ought to get rid of that because it just takes up space. Then the front bricks, this is a group of layers, just two, I guess, at this point. Oh, I know what I did. I combined all of them. And then I added this little reflected light from the fire. And so there's off. So there's the fire taken off and here's the front bricks. And I just combine them to keep, uh, keep know where they are. I'll actually re rename it. You double click on it and you can rename it. You can see areas where I haven't, like in some of these cobweb layers, uh, I should have. I did with the back cobwebs because I wanted to know which were the back ones, but with the forward ones, and that must be on the other side or oh, the spinning layer or something. Oh, these are the little spinning um, brush strokes, hard to see. So those are the little spinning strokes. I'm, I'm a big believer in when you're texturing things that less is more. And so I try to uh, be, uh, you know, air on the side of being a little too subtle. Here's that ground fog. So I just wanted something to break up this dark line. And so I put the mist in there. The light, some of these are named well, some of them are not. The light on, on it's supposed to be light on the back wall. So it's this area here. So here's that, that. Um, because I use mostly multiply default and screen, um, and I don't paint on the borders of each of them, I have to keep things like these grouped. Otherwise, if I collapse them, I might get some artifacts that I don't want, and I can't even tell you what's going on there. Oh, back cobwebs again. And then if I need to combine them, I will hide everything else and go ahead and clone the image so that I only have um, the back wall layers cloned, and then I can work on them as a solid layer. So that's the back wall. I'll just start getting rid of these things. Here's his figure because he's kind of most important in foreground. So there's what's under him, really a mess, but uh, there's what's under him. And if I expand him, there's all sorts of things. So 
the reflected light on his hand and uh, some of the other areas. This one's probably the same thing. Again, I try to be, I could have been a lot more, um, I could have made that a lot more noticeable, but I really wanted a dark face with this light band across it. So I tried to err on being subtle with it. And then that one, the first finger reflection, this one, just a little bit there. This one, the rose. And that was kind of a tricky thing is keeping the rose dark enough. When you get in really dark light, you don't see much uh, yellow, green, um, those kind of colors or oranges. It, it, they mostly go away. So I can't, oh, that's on his hand here. So I try, I try to keep them in the same value range because ultimately value is what's going to make this understandable. These are his shoes down here. I can't even tell what that is. Oh, it's a little bit of um, like dust kind of stuff, uh, some ashes that I wanted. His shoes, and this is his pants. And I try to, when I'm teaching, shadow on his hand, I try to uh, teach people kind of this uh, you'll hear it said 2080 rule, what, whatever, that you should spend, there's this shadow, 20% of time on everything in the image but where you want people to look, and then 80% of the time where you want people to look. And I probably did spend 80% of the time on him here, because that's where I wanted you to look, and it was the most challenging thing. The biggest challenge was keeping this secondary to him and you know the viewers ultimately the one that knows you know judges if i'm successful or not so the rest of this became a lot easier to finish because i just kind of didn't have to put in any really developed or careful brush strokes his bottle definitely had to be it's probably got more layers than anything else so it starts down here and I did this because I needed, I wanted to make it so you could see the background through it. Make it big enough so you can actually see when I'm turning things off. Uh, blood on, blood in it. And I tried, I don't think I've got the layer still, but I tried some blood up and uh, pouring out and it just looked, looked distracting to me. So that was the label. And I painted over it a little bit because there was something off in it. Um, but that's the label. And I did this. I made a little rectangular selection, filled it with a color, and then I went in. In fact, I'll show you. It's really, it's really cool and it's really fun. Um, so new layer here. And let me just make a selection on it. This is a really, really fun thing to do. So I'll fill it. And I'll come down and on the bottom of the layers here, there are these dynamic plugins and I went to burn and I could have gone to tear, but this is what it does. If you ever need to make a pirate man or a pirate map, there's, there's what you do and you can tweak everything. I didn't want the color to be, you know, burning looking, but I wanted the rough edges. Uh, you can just tweak all of this and it's great. And then you can work around and see if you like it, uh, if you don't like it, whatever. So I'll click OK, and it's still a different layer now. And if I decide I don't like that, I can't paint on it, I can't do anything right now, but I can double click it and I can change the options on it. And when I want to paint on it or wrap it around, then I just right click on it and convert it to a default layer. So there's also the other one here. So I hold control click to select it and it's um, tear. And so it'll make you have kind of these torn edges on it. When you need something rough, pirate map or an island map or anything like that, it, it's they're really cool uh, to use. So the rest of the flame um, or the bottle, they're just so many layers and it was all about stacking them and still getting some of the transparency. And it was harder in this because the transparency was against a dark object. And I wanted the bottle 
to be dark. And so everything was duplicating, changing, painting out, erasing, uh, doing all this layer stuff to get me exactly what I want. Looks like I've got a extra layer hiding from me somewhere. Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna drag it into layers now. So that uh, that's what I did for this. And why is it showing up? Oh, I drug it into the wrong thing. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it. it I think it jumped down to here. There it goes. Okay, there's nothing on that layer. Foreground rubble, there's not very much here. It's basically these foreground rocks. And so here's what I did is I painted the rocks first on this layer. I duplicated or, or I control click this to give me a selection. I put another layer on it. I filled the selection and then I started tweaking it. This one's multiply and I'll go in and erase. Um, I'll do whatever it needs. One thing I had trouble with was getting this light layer to look correct over those really darks. And so underneath it here, this is actually separate from these and it had to be a lot lighter and a lot con more contrast. And then the screen worked over it. So you can see it's partially there. So there's the foreground. We're, I'm just deconstructing this step by step. Dracula's burned up, disappeared. Front cobwebs, they just had to be over back, anything in the background. Now on this too, or I don't, or it's not in this version. At the very, very end, I went out and grabbed a few uh, images online of spider webs and I made a brush out of them. So in the final image, there's just a slight real kind of spider web, web over this. You can't hardly see it unless you really look, but it added just a little bit more. Okay, here's the fire layer and there's quite a bit. This is the one on his legs here. I don't usually work in hundreds and hundreds of layers, but I, I had to with this one. So that's those little scratchy things. Most of these layers are screen layers. Some are default. Here's the front fire. Now that's a combination of layers that I combine them and put them into here. And in the movie, it's just a selection that goes over his leg and then goes on this other side. Let's see. That's just a real subtle glow behind the fire, just to lighten it a little bit the flames themselves, the main flames. When I'm doing something like this where I'm working from a sketchbook sketch or something, most of the time I don't want to use uh, photo reference. So I'll look at it, but I won't you know, copy and paste it in because it breaks uh, the continuity a lot for me. So even the back bricks, though they look photographic, um, they kind of started that way, but I went in and repainted over them completely. And then I distorted them a little bit so they're not in even lines, but they're so dark, maybe I didn't even need to bother with that. But I like the way it looks. Okay, so these this is the little cobblestone pattern to kind of make little burned areas, another one. And then I'm just getting up to, probably should have, didn't need that layer terribly much. And then I get into where I'm doing the little sparks. Some of these sparks, most of these sparks are just with a splattery airbrush or a different airbrush. These are an actual um, texture image where it's kind of like confetti, confetti kind of things, but made into, I well, just used it and I loaded the whole texture and once it was in, I held the control key and I clicked on it. That's selecting wherever there's a little bit of it. I'm selecting the wrong layer. So let me get the right layer. Okay, I'll hold. And there you can see it selects them. 
and I don't paint over what I'm using for the texture, I create a new layer and paint on the new layer. I try to keep any uh, general uh, assets I'm using uh, reusable, not only for this project, but for any other project. So now it's just additions of more little sparks and things. Uh, there's all the fire. So now it's getting pretty empty. And the beauty, of course, of digital is you can be kind of sloppy on the underlying things if you know they're going to be covered. And so I tell people, tell students, you know, be a lazy artist, but look at that as meaning being a fast artist and don't paint everything if you only need to paint a little bit of it. Because if nobody's going to see it, nobody's going to care. So don't, um, don't paint every detail. Work from large to small, general to specific. I got all these little rules. Oh, well, that's my extra layer. Okay, the foreground. There it is, and there it's off. And that's just the uh, image hose. Let me shut that up. Light on the back wall, we looked at that. It keeps jumping on me. Okay, the front cobwebs, we saw that, fire, we saw that. This was a general layer to help darken everything just a little bit more. I will come in, and this is more of this. Um, I wanted it to look like little ashes coming up because everybody knows when vampires burn, they turn into ashes really quick. And then there's the whole top thing. So it was over 130, um, 130 layers, and I tried to make sure that grouped them smartly and labeled the groups so that I didn't have to guess. Because if I've got a guess, I invariably will uh, erase something and not mean to. And then it's, uh, you know, that's why I save so many things because I don't want to have to go back. Got to get that front layer. I don't want to have to go back and uh, recreate it. So if I can go back and just pick it up out of an earlier version, that saves me a lot of time. Uh, I learned that by heart, hard experience. You know, I'd be working in my basement or something and <clears throat> be a thunderstorm outside and I don't hear very well, so I wouldn't hear it. All of a sudden everything goes black and I've lost half, half a day's worth of work. And, you know, I'm getting to be a cranky old man and that really makes me cranky. But I can, I can tolerate losing half an hour and um, again, this one took a long time. Am I actually happy with it? I can't tell you that until probably tomorrow, because right now I'm looking at it and going, yeah, you're pretty damn good. Good for you, you know? Okay, you can do this stuff. And then I'll come in tomorrow and look at it and go, oh, you've got to be kidding. Why didn't I fix that? Or why didn't I do that? Or um, what happened there? Right now, I'm pretty happy with it, mostly because this is what I wanted to work. I'm not real happy with this. I think it's a little too strong and maybe a little bit too cartoony for the character. So I may at a future date come back in and fix it, but I probably won't. I'll just probably wait until the next image to make it better and look at, make sure everything looks more appropriate. Uh, for the character, and I, you know, I don't know. It's the viewer who judges that. And uh, as your artists know, you you're your hardest critic. Um, you're the hardest critic you're going to have. So I can't tell you if it's any good. It's good enough. I'll probably post it on my website. And maybe I'll stick it on Instagram, or at least the face. Um, it is really big. So this is 50%. When I paint, I do constantly do this, and so I'll take it out way small, and especially with this image, because it was dark, if I can read it really tiny, and I think I could pretty well, because what I was looking for was, can I still see him, or does this start to dominate? And it probably dominates a little more than I would want, but I can still see Dracula. And so if I can still see something at a real thumbnail size, then I'm probably safe coming up here and 
doing more detail. You know, if you go into a art show or something and you see something across the room, you're always seeing it little. And the reason you go out and look at it, put your nose in it, is because it looks good across the room. And then you can come up at 100% and start looking for specifics. You know, you can't see the skin spots. You can't see the little tiny highlights. You can't see the cobwebs. Uh, you can't see um, any of this stuff. Let me bring in the final one where I did put the spider webs over. John, so, <clears throat> before you do that, um, I've got some questions, and I don't think that you showed this, but how did you get the pattern on the vest? Oh, I didn't. Okay. Um, that's really easy, uh, and it's a really quick, uh, quick thing to do. So let me bring that in. I'll just bring this final in. This isn't the final. Maybe it's the final. Yeah, it's the final. I made the spider webs more subtle than I thought I did. So here you can see in there in this, there's just a couple extra little spider webs just on top of everything. Um, but again, if you squint at them, you can't see them. That's the way it should be. So let me close this out and come back in in the painter with this. I could have done it on that now. This. Okay. So here's, it's really quick to do too. So I'll just do it on top of, um, well, this is the spider webs. I'll do it on top of Dracula again. Zoom in. And I want to put them on. I painted the buttons afterwards. They were on a different level. And actually, the buttonhole's wrong, but uh, oh well. Created a, let's see, I'll bring in a new image of Paisley's. So let me grab one that I use. I don't even worry too much about them being um, seamless. Usually I'm really, really worried about some of my stuff being seamless. This may be the one I even used. Maybe I made it a pattern. Let me look. Nope, wrong window. Okay, I used a different one. So I'll go ahead and use that one. So Paisley pattern, let me close this one. So I create a new layer. And I, I love doing this. I'm not trying to wrap it around them or anything. I'm, I'm just simply coming in. I'll make a selection around it. Just rough, especially if it's going to be behind something. But this is a simple enough shape. And then I'm going to fill it on the new layer. So I pick my fill. And I make sure instead of the current color, it's the clone source. Because if you don't have a defined clone, the patterns are your clone source. And you can see all the brick patterns I did too that I ultimately didn't use. I'm just seeing if I can make those bigger. I'm not gonna worry about it. Then I'll just come in and fill that with a pattern. Okay, that's too big. So I'll come back in here and I'll make the scale smaller until I get the size I want. That works pretty well. Control D to get rid of uh, selection. And I'll start playing with what do I want to do to apply it. Because this is a lighter pattern, I'm probably going to use screen overlay. Let me move that just a little bit up. Uh, hard light, soft light, because I don't want to lose the pattern. Um, if I use multiply, it'll all just go too dark. And it depends on how subtle. Now, most of the time, um, you know, obviously the fabric wraps around the figure, but I'm only showing so little of it here. I don't even worry about it uh, at this much. So I just put that on and I'll go ahead and drop that onto the image. Just somebody remind me not to save this image because it's the final one. Um, so 
where to go. I usually put these um, layer commands on a menu too, so I don't search the room. And I guess it's, okay, so there it is on there. Well, I should say I do. Then, then if I want to make add the light to it, you know, a shine up the middle, I'll just come in with a, an airbrush, usually just a digital one. Okay, and picking a, uh, I'll create a new layer that is a screen. And then I'll select a color that will make it light enough, and then I'll just lightly paint in the highlight on top of it. And that's, it's, it's really as simple as that. If I'm doing something really complicated, I will actually take the time to try to distort it around the, uh, the object itself, but it, for something where this little is showing, I didn't need to do that. People are not going to look at it and go, well, you didn't get the paisleys wrapped around his stomach. And you know, you're right. I don't even care if you look at the paisleys because I want you looking at his face. So get rid of that. So it's easy. There it is right there. Delete that was that. fantastic. Ken said, thank you very much. There was a few people that asked <laughs> the question about the vest. And I just wanted to let you know, there's a comment here about your bottle that do not change it. I love the bottle. Okay. So, yeah, and I think the painting looks amazing, but I understand artists well, are. And almost to me, maybe it's not so much. I wish I could see a little more transparency. I can see the bricks through it. But I found as I was getting more transparency, the better I was losing the outline of the bottle. Um, but maybe it's the font. Maybe I chose an old font that looks too much hand drawn and like I just knocked it in there because I try never to do any hand drawing fonts because handwriting is not as good as the font you can use. Um, so that's anyway, I'm not going to save. Let me close this before I forget. To yeah, save. don't save over it. <laughs> no. And I'll get the other one back in here. So um, um, I have one last question. We're already at the top of the hour. I can't believe it. Um, and hopefully this is easy for you to answer. But the where is this, um, this light on the hand? Uh huh. Did, did you use a particular brush for that? Yep. I like I said, ninety percent of what I did in here. I used four brushes, and so uh, in this particular case, I closed it. But I just used Don's brush. Um, okay. It's, that's not um, a real exotic answer, but most of the 90% is done with this Don's basic brush, which looks like that. And you know, I'll vary the profile, I'll vary the opacity, um, but that's that's really, I use a light touch. Um, I have the brush set, so I've got to press really hard uh, to get it to full strength. And I'll tweak the settings. So size right now, well, I, I'm playing with a brush, but let me switch this and then I'll do this and then I'll get off. So I can vary it pretty good. Mm, and sometimes, yeah. yeah, sometimes I'll invert it. So it starts out big and goes small as I press hard. Now for those four brushes, I said the last question was the final, but Jason, I think it was Jason that asked this, um, was curious, do you know what the original painter brushes were before you modified them? Most of those, okay. The only one that isn't in there is this one, the dot, because it's just an eraser. And so I think these basic brushes, let me look. Um, well, I know, okay, the basic brush one. So there's the basic brush. Um, there's the blender that's up there. There's, oh, I added this. Grout's not in there, but I just modified a brush and saved it there. The skin spots is in there. 
Uh, the bristle brush that I use to paint the hair is in this pack. Um, oh, you... is your your master pack? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I made them. I like them. I might as well use them, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, these they're just all out of... Um, out of my master pack somewhere down right right there okay Fantastic. Even, the, even the gravel painter that i use that for grout is in there and i just tweaked them a little bit but the defaults would have worked just fine too so here's the gravel painter brush and that that would have worked just fine okay great so well yeah. all of Feedback is excellent. You cannot see it. I know it's hard to sit and just talk it's a seance. <laughs> to yourself for the whole time, but everybody was really engaged. Well, Tanya, you were out there, you know, I'm working away and your spirit came in and inspired me. So I kept going. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for another amazing Halloween themed webinar. Um, everybody, I didn't mention this, and I think we told you when we sent the email, but this has been recorded. So I will pop that up on our YouTube channel later on today. I think you can also watch it right from GoToWebinar, but I'll get okay. it up on YouTube. And I think the last two are up there too, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Like We've Halloween. got all your webinars up there. So if you guys feel like having a Halloween illustration binge, you can replay them on our YouTube channel this weekend since most of us can't go out, really. <laughs> and if, you know, I will really try to answer questions in a timely fashion. If they just go to my website, they can email, email me through there. And, you know, I may not get to you within an hour, but within a day, I'll try to answer if I get any questions. Um, okay, you know. good. And I misspoke. I added Don to your webinar or to oh. your um, website link, so I let everybody know it's stegmillerart.com. Yeah. Sorry, right. I just <laughs> I corrected that in the questions panel here. So stegmillerart.com is where you can go to find Don, and we'll have this recording up probably in about an hour and a half or so. It takes a little while to process. Hey, thanks everybody. You know, you can't see all my arm gestures, but I'm used to this, my students seeing me making all the gestures on screen. So just imagine me waving bye-bye to you, because I am. <laughs> Thank you so much, Don. And thanks bye. everybody for joining us. Um, we'll inform you about the next session next month. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but it's um, Issa Sosa, she's a new painter master, so I hope you can join us. Have a great holiday weekend. You can dress up at home. I've got my dogs <laughs> making noises now. They're they're waiting for me to let them out the door. <laughs> you know, Tanya, just getting dressed is the challenge, let alone getting dressed up. <laughs> I'm going to dress up. I'm going to well, dress the dogs up. I take some Smarties to my jeans. How's that? All right. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Okay. Take so, care, everybody. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye.